c'est bon Ouais, c'est bon. Ok. Uh, the, I guess uh, the, uh, for the people following online, can you see my slide? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. Keep hearing, that's okay. So uh, thank you, Jean, uh, for the kind in <coughs> introduction on the invitation in this uh, beautiful uh, part of Italy. Uh, so my name is Marc Lelarge, and uh, I will speak about uh, the topics related to this school, <laughs> namely statistical physics, a little bit of uh, random matrices at some point, and a little bit of random graphs also. Uh, <clears throat> for the first lecture, I decided to do it with uh, slides uh, to give you uh, 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 an overview of the kind of results I'm uh, aiming for. And then uh, uh, for the rest of my lectures, I will do, do it on the blackboard and uh, be a, a little, little bit more precise and rigorous in my uh, uh, <coughs> in the derivation of the result. Uh, I guess I can remove my uh, yes. mask. Uh, <coughs> Uh, most of what I will present uh, is actually joint work with a former PhD student of uh, me, uh, who is now working at G Research. So his, uh, his, uh, his name is uh, Leo Miolan. And uh, the work uh, I'm presenting here, uh, you, there is a, an archive version, and I think there is a, also a, a confirmed version available uh, on the web. So. On the slides, I, I can uh, share it with you if you, if you want. So I, I chose a topic which is called uh, semi-supervised learning. So I guess you all know what uh, super, supervised learning is when you have label on the dataset and labels, unsupervised when you have no labels, you have only the dataset and you want to learn a representation. So semi-supervised learning is in between uh, the two. So it's, I think, a nice model to start with because it interpolates between the two uh, unsupervised and supervised learning that I will discuss uh, afterwards. So a little, I will start with a little bit of, uh, of uh, motivation. Uh, so my work is uh, motivated by uh, what people do in, in practice. So there is this uh, famous quote due to uh, Benjamin Brewster. So in theory, there is no difference between theory and practice, but in practice there is. Uh, and what we are trying to do is to uh, <coughs> close the gap or at least to, uh, to understand better the gap between theory and practice. So when I, I presented this, uh, apparently somebody in the audience told me that uh, it's not even a Benjamin Brewster, though in theory it's Benjamin Brewster, but I'm not sure in practice it's a quote of Benjamin Brewster. Anyway, so here is, a, <coughs> is a, a one motivation for what uh, I will present. Uh, this is a relatively uh, new, I think it's uh, two or three years uh, ago, it appeared in, in the RIPS. Uh, so it's uh, pre-historical pre ages uh, in terms of deep learning, but still. Well, they, uh, they look at what they call realistic evaluation of uh, deep semi-supervised learning algorithm. So again, you are in a setting uh, where you have a huge data set of images in this case, uh, and you only a subset of your data set as a label. So you can think of, uh, for this talk, I will only consider a classification task. So you want to classify cats and dogs, but you only have a few labels, uh, and you want to uh, use the remaining, the unlabeled part of your data set in order to get better prediction. So what they, they found in this, uh, so this is a purely empirical uh, paper uh, where what they tried is to uh, <coughs> get uh, empirical measure uh, for the algorithm which were presented in other papers and try to compare them, okay? Uh, as you know, as soon as you do empirical work, uh, you, uh, you, you build a new algorithm and you have a tendency to, uh, 
be very careful in the, the tuning of the parameter of your own para algorithm and not that careful with the tuning of the parameter of uh, algorithm you want to beat. Uh, and this is basically uh, the, the main point of this paper to be careful <coughs> for all algorithm. And what, what they found is if you try to be careful, then uh, there, there is a lot of results that uh, turn out to, to be not that impressive. So here is a, a practical example. So uh, Cypher 10, if you don't know, this is a, a relatively small uh, image data set with 10 classes. And uh, so these models are uh, uh, in the literature and what they claim is, so this is uh, the, the percentage, percentage of errors, so the lower the better. Uh, and what they claim is that uh, if you uh, compare uh, an algorithm where you train only on the label data with, so you, again, you have the huge data set, a small part with label data, so you train only your algorithm on this part, and then you, you, you compute the test error on the other algorithm, which is a semi-supervised one. You can use a label data, but you can also use the unlabeled data, okay? And you should get a better performance. So the gap in performance is distributed here. So you go from 34% uh, of error to 12% uh, with this uh, pi model algorithm, whatever this is. And uh, you see that the author the, of Google who recorded everything from scratch, they see that the improvement is actually much weaker. Uh, on the label data set, they did <coughs> indeed a much better uh, than what previous author did. So they, they have a, an error of 20% and they improve only to 16%. Okay. Is, so this is uh, the, the, the main uh, uh, message, I guess, uh, from, from this paper is that uh, semi-supervised learning is not really working uh, in practice. Uh, just training your algorithm on the label data on using this algorithm uh, to do the classification is doing a pretty good job. Okay. So this is uh, what triggers uh, <coughs> my curiosity. Uh, and I asked myself, okay, if semi-supervised learning does not work in practice, uh, can it work in theory? Okay. Uh, so this, I mean, if you think a little bit, uh, there are people doing uh, even uh, more fancy stuff like in, in economics, for example. So here is a quote. Uh, an economist is a man who, when he finds something works in practice, wonders if it works in theory. So here I have something which does not work in practice and I try to see whether it will work in theory. Uh, the goal being that uh, if it works in theory, then perhaps I can fix what is not working in practice. Okay, so <coughs> now uh, this is the motivation uh, behind uh, this work. And uh, now I will present my uh, theoretical framework, uh, which will be uh, very simple, uh, far from the real data set. Uh, I will consider uh, what is called the Gaussian mixture model uh, in uh, high dimension and in a Bayesian setting. So I, I will clarify all of these uh, words uh, in a few minutes. So the model will be simple enough uh, that we are able to uh, basically compute uh, everything. So what we are interested in here uh, in, in, in this setting is uh, try to get the performance of a uh, fully supervised approach. So when you do the training only on, on, uh, on the label data and uh, what is the best uh, semi-supervised approach uh, you can do when you are using both labeled and unlabeled data. It's not, uh, as you will see, and uh, this will be true for the rest of my course too, it's not related to a particular algorithm. Uh, what I am trying to, to compute are uh, what people call information theoretic uh, limits uh, that are the best possible uh, performance uh, you can achieve uh, whatever algorithm you are using. 
Okay, and since uh, we, are, we are not uh, linked to a particular algorithm, uh, you, you will be able with, uh, again, uh, this uh, simple toy model to, uh, to, uh, to quantify the increase of, uh, in performance, the best possible increase you can do uh, by considering the unlabeled data in this semi-supervised uh, setting to see whether it, if it was uh, practiced or not. So I'm presenting with slides, but uh, feel free to interrupt me uh, whenever you have a question, uh, a, a term is not clear or, or anything. So here is uh, <coughs> the semi-supervised uh, binary classification model. So uh, I don't have 10 classes anymore, I have only two, uh, <coughs> which will be encoded by plus one and minus one. And uh, the, the model is uh, the following. So the VI are the plus and minus one. So you, you have two cluster. You are either of class plus one or of class minus one. And uh, the U is uh, a random variable uh, in uh, I dimension, so on the unit sphere in, in D dimension. You, uh, if you are at plus one, then you will be uh, uh, centered uh, close to plus U. If you are in the cluster minus one, you will be centered at the cluster minus U. And then you are adding a little bit of Gaussian noise with this uh, Z uh, variable. So what you observe is the, re the resulting uh, point uh, in RD, uh, uh, which is denoted by Y. Okay, so this is the simplest. Uh, everything is uh, IID in, in G. Uh, there is no uh, covariance matrix in the noise. So, uh, I mean, this is a trivial identity. Uh, and for each sample, uh, it's IID. Yeah, I, I say that. Is there any question on, on this model? So, this is uh, the data set. Now I have to <coughs> define the label which are available uh, to you. So this is what I'm calling the side information. So I will reveal the label, which is a uh, variable V, which is either plus one or minus one with a probability eta independently of everything else. And I will not reveal it to you with a probability one minus eta. In this case, the side information is zero. So if uh, the side information is zero, this means you do not observe the label. If you have a plus or minus one, you know that this is a true label. Okay, so eta is a fraction of uh, label data in your data set. Uh, you observe the side information S, uh, SG on uh, YG, and now you have to, uh, to, <coughs> to, to uh, try to classify, so I will consider that, sorry, only uh, to, to classify the different v, uh, VG. So uh, what you could do is uh, <coughs> to, to to uh, try to predict the unseen labeled. What we do is uh, something uh, uh, that will be uh, similar. We, we take a new sample. So let's say you know, this is a train test. You have you know, the test uh, uh, data set, which has exactly the same distribution. Uh, you do not observe the label, of course, and you try to predict from this new sample what is uh, its label. Okay, so this will be the measure of performance. Yes? Yes. Ah. So U is a fixed direction that, uh, I mean, uh, the, uh, on the unit sphere. And, and then it's fixed, and it's the same for everybody. Okay. So now you have the plus and minus one. So in 2D, you, you, you fix, yeah. But the marginal, I mean, you are correct, the marginals are still uh, uniform on the sphere for the V. Anyway. So thanks for, for the question. So, uh, <clears throat> I'm considering a high dimensional setting. So uh, by now, I guess uh, everybody in this audience at least will buy uh, this uh, assumption. So and the number of samples 
on the dimension with both tends to infinity. And the ratio n over d uh, will be fixed, so a, a constant alpha. Okay. So this is a <coughs> this is a model. What you need to remember uh, the number of parameters you have is uh, it, the, the model is fully specified by the parameter sigma, the variance of the noise, eta, the number of label you are revealing on alpha, which is the ratio of the dimension number of samples. So you have three parameters. Now what uh, do we call a, a, a Bayesian, to be optimal, uh, to be in the optimal Bayesian setting? Uh, this means that the statistician knows the parameter <coughs> of the model. So he knows the model, of course, and he knows the parameter of the model. Uh, which are again the variance of the noise eta the fraction and alpha the, the, the ratio. Uh, so he knows all the, he, he also knows that uh, u is uniformly distributed on the sphere, uh, that z, z is Gaussian, and, and, so, and v is uh, plus or minus one with probability one. So all, the, all these parameters are known to the statistician. And now uh, this is uh, what he is trying to uh, to minimize so the base uh, risk. So you have uh, I should probably show it uh, with my mouse here. You have uh, your estimator given uh, the data set y, <clears throat> the side information s, and you are picking a new sample in the test set. Uh, uh, you want to predict if it's uh, in class plus one or minus one. So you are making an error with this probability. You want to minimize this error with respect to all the measurable function of your observation. Okay, so V hat is, uh, is, uh, is your estimator. And as I said, the new sample is drawn with the same distribution as the data set sample. Okay, is there any questions so far? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, what I'm trying to measure is uh, the power of generalization of my uh, of of my estimator. Uh, so I'm making the assumption in order to 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 be able to do some math. I'm making the assumption that uh, the new sample has the same distribution as uh, the distribution of my data set. And that's it. Yeah. So do you tend to just pick the first data structure? Or do you uh, okay. Uh, uh, okay. I mean, uh, so the question is uh, for the you, can you just take the first unit vector? Uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, it will not change the the model at all. I mean, you, you can always say that you you change uh, you, you do a rotation and you put yourself in this setting. But uh, what matters is you should not tell this to the statistician, otherwise there is a, a trivial uh, algorithm. I mean, this is a, this correspond to actually the, the first algorithm I will look at, which is called the oracle. When you when you know you what is the performance you can achieve. There is a, <laughs> it's not me. Okay, so this is, I think, related to your question. What, what can you do if you, if you know, uh, in addition, the, the U vector? Uh, so this is uh, what people call, some, well, what I'm calling here the oracle risk, because uh, you are giving a, a lot of information to the statistician here. Uh, Okay, so I will not uh, show it here, but it's uh, there, there is a, an algorithm which seems to, to be uh, uh, sensible uh, indeed. If you know the direction u, uh, it, now if you have a new sample, what you should do is just take the cross product between this new sample and your u, which is known. And if this, uh, <coughs> this uh, cross product is uh, positive, you say it's in the class plus one, 
otherwise it's in the class minus one okay so you just take the sign of this uh, cross uh, oxygen dot product and <coughs> it will give you a good answer it turns out that uh, this algorithm is actually uh, optimal meaning that it will uh, minimize uh, the, the the risk and you can compute uh, the oracle risk in this case so this is simply the probability that the the sign of the sigma again this is a, the variance of the noise <coughs> is uh, is bigger than one so it's if the if the noise uh, the, in the cross product is bigger than one then you will make a mistake in, in the sign and this is uh, just uh, since you are projecting a Gaussian random variable on a, on a U, uh, this is still Gaussian and you can compute everything. The, the important thing to notice here is that uh, even in the Oracle setting where U is given, uh, you see that there is a non-trivial, uh, the error, the, the risk is not zero. Uh, you have a, a non-trivial risk, uh, which does not depend uh, on the parameter eta for sure on alpha. Uh, the, the dimension, but it depends only on the on the variance of the noise. So we are in a regime where, for sure, you, you will not be able to to do a, a risk of zero. For the risk you you want to to compute. Now uh, there is uh, another case which is uh, relatively easy to study. It's a fully supervised case. Uh, so in this case, you are observing all the v, uh, vi. So you can cancel them uh, out by multiplying each uh, y by the vi, and you obtain <coughs> just expression like this. So you are removing the the label. Uh, and now, uh, what you can do is uh, taking averages uh, over your uh, observation in the data set, so in the train data set. And you will try to uh, estimate each component of you like this by just averaging, and you will decrease the noise just by a simple averaging. So you see that the variance of the noise is decreased by a factor of a square root of n. And now, if you you, you take this uh, for uh, uh, your estimate of you, and if you have a, a new sample. You just take the dot product with this uh, estimate of y, and you see that you have two terms. Uh, the, the first term, uh, which is of interest to you, is this one because it contains the v new that you want to predict, and this is the noise term over there. If you do uh, <coughs> very simple uh, math, uh, when you let n on d tends to infinity, uh, you can convince yourself that this uh, will be roughly of order one, okay? Because u is on the uh, the unit sphere, and you have a, an explicit uh, formula for uh, y one here. Uh, so this is basically v new, so exactly the signal you want to estimate. Now you need to. Uh, this is a, a, a <coughs> the noise term. So which is Gaussian again, and you need to compute the variance of this Gaussian in order to, to, to know the error, exactly like in the, in the Oracle setting. And again, uh, an easy computation of the variance of this is given here. So again, since we projected everything uh, on a line, even so we started in a D dimension, uh, everything reduced to a one dimensional uh, problem now. Uh, and so you have the signal, which is a plus minus one, uh, plus some uh, Gaussian noise with this variance. And you see that you have uh, the, the parameter alpha, uh, which, is, uh, which is present uh, now. So you, you have uh, now what we will call later a, a scalar channel, uh, where the, the signal, which is a plus or minus one, is here. And you are with additive Gaussian noise. This is uh, how it's called. And based on uh, the output of this channel, you want to get the best estimate of the new. And again, uh, you will make a mistake if the if the if the noise is, is too big, which is uh, bigger than one, which is uh, everything can be computed explicitly. 
so again in the oracle setting we had only the one minus phi of one over sigma here we have this addi this uh, additional term uh, <coughs> yeah but a, a similar formula okay so uh, it turns out that this setting was studied uh, uh, by a statistician in a much more general setting actually where you have a, a covariance in the noise uh, that you needed to uh, to estimate any question on these two uh, simple cases so we have uh, basically a lower bound the oracle risk an upper bound which is uh, this fully supervised uh, setting and what we want to compute is uh, in between these two bonds uh, what is the risk as a function of eta so the risk uh, <coughs> Uh, which is uh, the uh, error you are making uh, should uh, be uh, a monotonous function of eta. I computed it at zero and at one, and I want to, to, to get the, the risk in between. So it turns out that uh, <coughs> the general formula is, uh, is written here uh, for the risk for any eta. Uh, so as you see, uh, it's a little, I mean, you have the, the same kind of, form, of uh, formula as before. It's one minus phi, where phi is uh, related to the Gaussian uh, <coughs> distribution, uh, a parameter divided by sigma. Uh, so this parameter was uh, one for the oracle on the square root of alpha, so something uh, for the uh, in this case. Okay. So the general form is is always the same, but uh, this Q star is uh, a little bit complicated. Uh, it's given uh, as a unique mi minimizer of this uh, weird function uh, that is written explicitly, but uh, it, it's not clear a priori that uh, for eta equals zero or eta equals one, uh, you can re recover the previous result. So this is true, uh, but you see that it's much more complex than that. Uh, yes. Why do we recover? No, no, no. Sorry, for the we are not recovering the. I, I say something wrong. So I can resume. Yes. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, so this, uh, you, you know, you, you what matters at this point? It's uh, it's a function of the three parameters of the problem: alpha, sigma, eta, uh, which is a function of uh, a, a variable q. So there is nothing random in, the, in, the, in this definition. Okay, uh, you have an explicit. This i v is given uh, over there. Uh, a function, and then everything is uh, is kind of uh, explicit. So here is a, a plot. I mean, uh, since you have an analytical solution, you, you can at least uh, plot uh, the value uh, to, to see uh, what happens. So uh, <clears throat> this is the uh, base so the risk as a function of eta. So eta equals zero means uh, I'm, I have no label data and supervised setting. Eta equals one, I should not show it here. Eta equals one is a fully supervised uh, setting. The oracle bond is uh, in green here, so we are not recovering the oracle bond. Sorry. Uh, the unsupervised setting is a dotted line here, so again, it does not depend uh, on eta. You are just taking the whole data set and uh, ignoring the label. Of course, for uh, eta equals zero, you, the, the two bonds are matching, and in red, you have uh, the semi the best performance you can achieve with a, in a semi supervised algorithm whatever the algorithm you are using so again this is an information theoretic uh, risk uh, so what is uh, the blue uh, curve that is crossing the so it's doing worse than the unsupervised setting with few label and then it match the, the the other one with uh, with uh, all the label. Can you guess uh, what I, I'm calling supervised here? Yeah, exactly. So this is uh, <coughs> the best uh, performing algorithm 
constrained only on the data set where you have a, a label. Okay. So when you have no label, you are doing a, a risk of 0 0.5, which is a random guess. Okay. So you are doing nothing. Uh, and you see that uh, when you have very few uh, label data, then uh, you are doing worse than the unsupervised uh, sleeping. And uh, as you are crossing this line here, so as soon as uh, the fraction of, of data is above, uh, I don't know, uh, 0 0.15 or 1, uh, just training your algorithm on, on, the, on the label data uh, will achieve better performance than uh, the unsupervised sleeping. Okay, so it it, it kind of uh, well, it, I'm not claiming uh, this is uh, 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 an example uh, which is connected to practice, but at least what you see is that uh, uh, the algorithm trained only on the label data is performing uh, very well quite soon, <coughs> uh, and most of the time uh, algorithm. Uh, train, uh, training an algorithm on label data is fairly simple, whereas uh, doing unsupervised learning is, 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 is might, might be tricky. So here is a, a, another uh, uh, plot uh, showing the impact of the noise. So here, eta is fixed uh, uh, to 20%. So I'm uh, on this line here. Uh, so again, uh, in green, you have the oracle. Okay, so uh, clearly, uh, so again, this is one over sigma. So uh, when you uh, you are going in this direction, you are decreasing the level of noise, so the risk is decreasing. Uh, you see that uh, the dotted uh, black curve corresponds to the best performance of any unsupervised uh, algorithm. Uh, so here, what you see is that uh, at, until a, a, a noise of vari uh, variance one, you are basically do, just doing random guessing. So there is no information you can recover. And then the risks start to decrease. And actually, this is uh, related to uh, what you already saw uh, in this course, uh, back then how special phase transition. So, if the noise is too high, then uh, there is no signal, and you can just you, you cannot do something anything, and then the risk start to decrease. Again, in uh, green, this is uh, supervised on uh, label data only. So here, the label data is twenty percent, and it's fixed. Uh, in red, this is the best uh, semi-supervised learning. Uh, so you see that uh, at the beginning, it's very close actually to uh, supervised on label data only. And uh, here it's very close to unsupervised learning. Uh, and the, dot, the dotted blue here is, sub, is uh, uh, when I, I'm, I'm cheating and I'm uh, looking at the best possible algorithm supervised on the whole data set. So this is a lower bound for my, all my uh, algorithm, except the Oracle, which uh, can do better. Okay. But okay, on this picture, you, you see that uh, basically, if you are in this regime, uh, you just training on the label data will achieve a, a very good performance. And you can throw all the, the sorry, all the data that, uh, <coughs> that are unlabeled. And if you are above the, <coughs> in this regime, uh, basically doing the opposite, uh, just using uh, unsupervised learning on the whole data set will achieve uh, almost uh, the, the best performance uh, possible uh, because the, the red is very close to the dotted uh, black curve. So in a sense, uh, uh, once you, you saw it, it's, it's quite intuitive, but uh, the range of parameters for which uh, semi-supervised learning is really useful, it's when you have a, a real gap between uh, the red on the blue or the red on the dotted black, and it's in a very small reg regime of the parameters. So the practical paper might, might be correct that, I mean, if in deep learning you are in this regime, then you can just uh, forget about 
semi supervised learning on doing training uh, on the on the label data it, it will achieve almost the best possible performance uh, how much time do do i have Ten. Minus two minutes. Oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I mean, yes. Uh, so I will skip. Uh, uh, Okay, perhaps uh, I will stop here and uh, start again uh, this afternoon uh, with a, a non-rigorous derivation of uh, at least explain uh, this formula, where, where, where these uh, terms are, are coming from, and then uh, proceed uh, later. Um, okay. <laughs>